So I wanted to dig a bit deeper into some of the core conversations I've been having in LinkedIn over the last uh, little while. Much of it around this world of change, this world of fragmentation that we're experiencing at the minute. And I kind of wanted in this talk to point the direction of where I think our industry is going to. This week I posted some interesting articles and had some interesting discussions. One in particular was around the academic world. You'll just, you'll see, a, uh, if you haven't read it, go, go to that particular post. There's some really interesting comments and debate going on in the world of academia, earth observation and how fragmented things are. It's a really interesting conversation, but I kind of wanted to go a little bit bigger than that. So let me put that this animated GIF up for you. What are you looking at here? It's kind of annoying because it's just going to cycle through. You're looking at a two dimensional view in, in one part of this. You're looking at trees. You're looking at transmission lines. It's classic two dimensional map. It's what you would see in a GIS, for example. But where did that data come from that you're looking at? That data, which is two dimensional data, is vector data coming out of a GIS, for example, the transmission lines, the poles, etc. So the assets, that tree data that you're looking at, they're polygons actually. That was collected with LiDAR. The colouring that you're looking at, that's tree health. How was that collected? Hyperspectral. What the crap am I talking about? Then we see a, then we see a different view. We see a three-dimensional view. We see a digital twin. LiDAR data again. There's also hyperspectral data there, which is helping to color things. We have a mixture of data sets here, which is fascinating. So let's move forward. We hear lots of conversations around sensors and where data is being collected from. We're collecting data from satellites. Much conversation there about what's being blasted up into the into space. Uh, satellite constellations, all these new sensors that are up there. So we've got a massive new data data source that's now uh, very, very re relevant. But what happens beneath that? Well, we've got fixed wing. We've been flying fixed wings for a long period of time. As an example, we fly transmission lines. We can go long distances with a, a fixed wing plane that's got lots of sensors on it. Below that, we've got helicopters. Below that, we've got drones. And drones are bigger, and, and, and as sensors get smaller, we can collect more data from there. And then we get the ground level as well. So we get terrestrial data being collected. So that's still the world of surveying, where we've got guys with tripods walking around. It might be LiDAR data, it could be other data sets they're collecting. We've got mobile mapping as well. So we are now collecting data through from the atmosphere all the way down to the ground. And actually, we haven't even mentioned below the ground and indoors. We won't go there. So lots of places we're collecting data from, lots of new sensors. So what is that data that we're collecting? Well, there's a mass of different data sets that now are being made available to folks. And this, this picture that it, on the right just here is, is just an example of that. So we've got traditional sort of GIS data, which is points, lines and polygons, I was taught at college, vector data. Most often it's two dimensional data, but we've also got LiDAR data. So that's 3D and more. We got uh, bathymetric, which is providing us the ability to um, no longer have to drive boats around with sonars punching to, the, to, to see what's, how deep the water is and, um, and what the landscape is under the water. We can now fly that and with bathymetric LiDAR, we can actually map out what's beneath the water. Incredible. Thermal. We got thermal sensors. We can actually now tell the temperature of assets on a power pole, for example, and if, if they're reaching a critical point in terms of temperature. We've got imagery we've had for a long time, but lots of different types of imagery. There's lots of advances in the imagery world as well. And then the bottom there, we've got hyperspectral. So that's uh, an incredible area that, w that I've only just touched on, uh, what the possibilities of hyperspectral data. So we have new data sources that are being collected from different places and we are bringing that data together. We're, we are doing analytics against that data. Colored point clouds, for example, where we can actually see in 3D what type of tree it is, whether that tree is a little bit too close to that power line, for example. So where this talk is going to is 
we still live in a land of experts. Remote sensing is a lot of what we're looking at in the diagram here. The thermal, the LIDAR, the imagery. We've also got GIS, GIS experts. So we have a team of, we have a world of experts and a lot of this data is processed and used by experts. Where we've got to get to, and to me, this is the place that geospatial has to move to, and those that are successful in the future will move to this place, is where we have folks that actually understand not just GIS, two-dimensional data. And again, if you look at the evolution of GIS, that's, that's becoming less and less true. But we've also got people that understand the remote sensing data we're generating and can ultimately bring that stuff together and provide solutions to folks that aren't experts, people that want to look in two dimensions, where are the greatest threat um, from a trees, for example, where are the healthiest of trees or the least healthy trees that might fall on the power line. And then to actually see that in three dimensions using augmented digital reality to say in a colored way, that tree there is a problem. We need to cut that one down or we need to trim here. That's only a small example I'm talking about, but it's only understanding that combination of data sets and the value of those data sets that we actually are able to translate that into something that non-experts can understand and make use of. So that's our path forward for geospatial. Thanks for watching.